When jumping into a software like NAN, there seems to be a ton of terms and concepts that the user has to know. Things like what is a large language model? What is an API? What is system or human prompts? And what I wanted to do is put essentially all the beginner terms in one video so that way you guys can watch this and have understanding when you're watching other workflow builds on YouTube. So today we're gonna to be covering 30 of the most common terms and concepts. If you guys wanna see also a part two, let me know because I easily could have made this video 50, 60, 70 terms, but I just had a cut off at 30 for this. Happy to make part two. Anyways, what I'm gonna do is share my screen. We'll go over some terms. We'll also show you what this looks like in N8N. And also if you're new to this channel, I do plan on making videos on every single one of these terms in the future. It's all gonna be in this N8N playlist that I am developing, which by the way, upload one N8N video every single week. Maybe we'll jump into two if you guys do enjoy these videos. Um, I'm gonna stop rambling on this intro and let's start learning. Okay, here are 30 different terms and concepts in NAN for beginners that you should know. We're gonna start off with what is NAN. So this is a workflow automation tool that really you don't need to know a ton about coding. There are some code snippets, uh, which you can either write in JavaScript or Python. Personally, I like writing in Python, but a lot of this is a big no code solution. There's actually two versions of NAN. There's cloud as well as self-hosted. Uh, most people, when you just jump into NAN, are going to be using cloud. Another tool that's kind of popular like NAN is make.com. There's also Zapier. Uh, but obviously, this tutorial series is going to be focusing around NAN. All right, the canvas. So this is the main interface within NAN's editor where you add and connect nodes, build workflows, and stuff like that. So uh, the canvas is essentially the entire side of things in the background. And then... Another term you'll hear is a workflow, right? So this is the multiple steps in a row that you need to take to achieve a result. Now, this is just a workflow from a video I already made on the channel talking about image editing. So this is one example of a workflow. And essentially, you'll be building out workflows to automate different tasks. Okay, so the trigger is going to be the start of any workflow. And one thing to note is a workflow can technically have multiple triggers, right? So here's a few examples. Over here, I show when clicking this manual trigger, right, to start the workflow. Another trigger you could use is in Google Sheets, right, a row added. There's so many triggers within over here. I took a screenshot from the application, right, trigger manually on an app event, on a schedule, webhook, which we'll be talking about a little bit later, form submissions when executed by another workflow, because you can actually have multiple workflows or even on a chat message, right? Um, nodes are the different components of a workflow, right? So a trigger starts a workflow, then you jump into nodes. So there's a ton of different nodes out there. Again, Google Sheets, you can read a sheet. So Google Sheets has different ways to be utilized, whether as both a trigger or a node, right? So a node example is reading a sheet. Gmail getting a message. You could also have like if else statements and that's down below, right? Um, your workflow essentially could split apart. You could have one flow if the statement is true, one flow if it is false, right? Again, more stuff over here, action and app, data transformations, flow, core, or even human in the loop, which waits for approval from a human before continuing. Again, all this will be covered in other videos here on the channel. We're just getting our feet wet in this lesson. Okay, now there also is something called community nodes. Now, these are gonna be expanded a lot within the future. And as I mentioned, there's two different versions of NAN. Uh, if you are using cloud, right, you're only limited right now to 25 verified nodes. But if you're on self-hosting, um, you're allowed to use way more. And there's this GitHub link on the screen right now that shows you a bunch of community nodes that people have developed. So feel free to take a look at that after this video, explore some of the nodes that are out there. And again, there's only 25 as of June, 2025, that's gonna expand out in the future. Um, so if you're watching this in a year from now, right, that number is probably way larger. And that's why I put that date in here. All right, execution is a single run of a workflow. When you first start your cloud account, you're gonna get 1000 free executions. And this is broken up, right? So manual 
is a run workflow manually when testing, right? Select test workflow to start manual execution. And then you have production, right? So production workflow is one that runs automatically. To enable this, you'll set your workflow as active, right? Again, thousand free out of the box for your first month. All right, let's talk data types. So there's quite a few different data types you're gonna be using within a data N. So let's talk about them. The first is gonna be string. So this is just essentially text. So for example, the YouTube channel, right? Ryan and Matt data science, that is a string, a number, right? So there's two types of numbers out there. You have integers as well as floats, uh, floats also being called decimal numbers. So you can think of an integer, right? Something like 24,200, which is the amount of subscribers currently on the channel, uh, a decimal number or a float might be like 5.5 or 2.1 or 24.2. All right, Boolean, right? So a Boolean is either going to be true or false, you know, representation of one or zero. An array, right? An array over here, also commonly called as list, right? So a bunch of items inside of the square brackets. Object, which is a big block of string numbers, arrays, and nested objects. Binary, this is a file, so it can be anything from like an image or a PDF. JSON which is around curly brackets. We have this over here, right? And we have null, which means there's no value at all, right? The value is missing. And lastly, you'll see date time, right? So for example, uh, when I first started building out this video on the 14th of June. Now let's talk about LM. So a large language model is an AI system that can perform tasks by analyzing and understanding natural language. Some of the most popular ones out there are Claude, Gemini, and GPT. You can see there is tons and tons uh, that you could utilize in here. In fact, there's ways to optimize your AI agent to use essentially the best model available. AI agent is a node that acts as a decision maker. It can dynamically decide which actions or tools to use. And you can see loaded up an open AI chat model and then also added in simple memory over here. I'll have a full video talking about AI agents. In fact, probably a ton of videos here on the channel in the future talk about AI agents, but there's a lot to explore on that side of things. But again, we're getting your feet wet within this video. Credentials. So these are stored authentication information on nodes to use external services. You'll either see these through API keys or OAuth tokens, right? So you need to have credentials to use OpenAI. And this is just an example on here, setting up an API key. Another example, which I already have a video on, is setting up Google Sheets, right? You have to go through the process. You can't just automatically connect to Google Sheets and send stuff over. Uh, you have to set that up through credentials first. An expression. So this is JavaScript code that allows you to dynamically populate node parameters based off of data from earlier workflows. So what you can see over here is in one of my workflows, I'm grabbing the, the information about an image, right? So what I have over here is an expression that grabs the JSON dot name. And all I did is drag over the name on the side of things out. Sounds confusing, but I promise you, as you build out workflows, this is really, really easy. Conditional logic, right? Already talked about this a little bit earlier, but you can create branches and workflows based off of data conditions, right? So the most common one you'll see is like an if else, right? So if it's true, it goes in one direction. Otherwise it goes another direction. You can also use switch, right? And have rules associated with it. And you can expand out way more than two. A prompt. So this is information that is going to be sent to a large language model. And you can think of this as like summarize the paragraph in three bullet points or write an example if else statement in Python. Now, and the deal about prompts is you can make these quite complicated. There's a lot of different prompting techniques out there. Uh, one of the techniques, which I'll show you right now, is by utilizing a system prompt. So this is a part of a prompt letting an LLM know what it needs to act as, right? So an example is you're a friendly and helpful customer support assistant for a fintech. You're an ultra marathon or coach who's giving advice to an experienced runner, right? You're giving that idea at the very top of, to the large language model. Okay, this is how you should specifically act. And then you have the prompt down below. And again, there's tons and tons of information about optimizing prompts. I have videos on the channel talking about that already back when I was doing a lane chain series about a year ago. But regardless, I'll probably make some other videos talking about prompt engineering, at least within NAN in the future, uh, depending on essentially on the workflow and what needs to happen on there. Okay, scraper. So essentially what a scraper does is it extracts information from websites. 
So in NAN, common scrapers people use are Firecrawl or Crawl for AI. You can also write custom scrapers for specific websites. And I do have a bunch of videos already recorded talking about how to use custom scrapers. And that tutorial series is gonna be coming out within the next few weeks here on the channel. Uh, there's a ton to learn about with scrapers on, on custom sites and writing at least within Python. And honestly, I could make 30, 40 videos on that side of things. But um, when that series is over, it'll probably be about 20 videos. And I'm gonna be publishing that as the same time as NAN, but we'll also explore like Firecrawl, Crawl for AI, and some of the other scrapers that are publicly available. All right, memory in context. So memory is a way to store and recall previous messages, which helps when building out specifically chatbots. Context refers to the relevant history or information from previous interactions that the AI agent uses to understand and respond appropriately to the current message. This is more important, again, when you're gonna be building out chatbots, which is a common use case within N8N. Um, again, sounds confusing now. It'll be a lot easier once we start building out chatbots. API. So this stands for Application Programming Interface. So many nodes interact with APIs to send or receive data from external services. I'm making an API understand information for integration tasks. Uh, there's a few terms associated with APIs. So the first is gonna be the endpoint. So an API endpoint is a specific URL or path on a server where an API can be accessed. Then you have the API call. So an API call is the actual request sent to an API endpoint. Uh, this is usually over HTTP uh, specifying action some of the most common ones you'll see are get and post. And you can also send in data or parameters depending on the API. The HTTP request is over here, right? This is the request that's sent to an API endpoint. Uh, again, most common are get and post. So get will grab your data, post is gonna send data. And you can see you have over here, HTTP request as a get. And you can see on this side of things, some of the different things you can fill out specifically in any. All right. so for your webhook. This is a trigger that allows your workflow to listen for incoming HTTP requests and trigger actions based off the data received. It essentially turns your NAN workflow into an API endpoint that can be called by external apps or services whenever an event occurs. And you can see how the start of our workflow begins with the webhook. You can also have workflows just based off of errors. So this is an error trigger on this side of things, right? So error workflows in NAN provide a structured way to handle failures that occur when during workflow execution, and you can start it with the error trigger. Now, here's the deal. Everyone thinks they can build out a perfect workflow. There's never gonna be errors, but truthfully, you are gonna have errors. You're gonna have to debug. It's just part of the process, right? No one is gonna be building out perfect applications out of the gate. Okay, now let's talk about a concept that's really, really important, and a lot of people um, utilize AI for this, and this is called RAG, which is Retrieval Augmented Generation. So essentially what this is, is a popular approach used to help LMs when working with private data. Um, large language models are trained on a ton and ton of data, right? But every company has personal data that they don't want to supply online. And this is where RAGs become really important because essentially you could supplement the data that large language models are already trained on with the additional data that you have in-house and essentially build out your own version of like a chat GPT internally, which is awesome, right? So retrieval grabs the data and generation builds out the answer. In the next few slides, we're gonna showcase parts of any type of RAG solution, which goes from document to download, document loader, chunks, embedding models, vectors, and vector stores. 100% without a doubt, there's gonna be a RAG video here on the channel with probably in the next month or so, uh, because this is a huge use case, at least for NAN and AI in general. So let's talk about some of the different steps. So the first is gonna be the document loader, which extracts or normalizes text from a file, right? It converts PDFs, Word files, or other information to plain text that can be processed. Then we're gonna talk about chunking, and here's chunking over here in NAN, right? And there's a lot of different approaches to chunking, but essentially this is splitting a large amount of text into smaller sections, and this makes it easier to search um, a large amount of text, right? So you could have a sentence like this, right? Data science is a great field of study for a master's degree. And you could have chunk one, data science, chunk two is a great field, chunk three to study for, chunk four, a master's degree. Now, this was just a very small example on a sentence. Typically you're chunking if there's a ton of text, right? And a sentence isn't really a lot. Embedding models turn words into numbers that represent the meaning for a computer. So again, we're going back to our chunks, right? Data science could be 
represented over here as 0 0.2, 0 0.5, negative 0 0.3 is a great field. It could be represented by negative 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.7, right? And there's a bunch of different embedding models out there. A really popular one that people use is OpenAI Text Embedding 3 Small. Maybe you're watching this in the future and you say that's a terrible model. Listen, I'm recording this June 2025. I can't predict what these companies are going to be um, building and different things like that with embedding models or large language models, right? Um, things are getting produced really fast. But regardless, as of today, that's a popular model. Uh, vectors is the list of numbers. So again, back in that slide, chunk data science, the vector 0, 2, 5, 0, 5, 0, negative 3. Um, just felt like this would be better on another slide rather than here because we, we did cover a lot. All right. Uh, vector store essentially stores and retrieves embeddings, right? A really common example of vector store is Pinecone. There are others out there as well. I know I'll be using Pinecone at least in the first rag built here on the channel, but we'll be exploring other ones as well. Okay, let's now talk about OCR, which is optical character recognition. So this is a technology that converts images of text like scanned documents or photos into machine readable text that can be edited, searched, and used in other applications. So you can take a PDF, right, a scanned PDF, and then convert this into text. Now, my full-time job, I work as a data scientist in risk and underwriting, and OCR is critical, right? So we might get it in a specific document associated with the financials of a company, and we want to essentially extract that information. And without OCR, right, we'd have essentially an analyst go through and grab all these data points and then perform them manually. But with OCR, a lot of that can be specifically optimized and make the process a lot faster. CRM stands for a uh, customer relationship management, which is a system for managing all your company's interactions with current and potential customers, right? You can think of this as like HubSpot or Salesforce, where you have all the information about a merchant, right? How much is the merchant spending with you? Are they just a lead or are they a full-time customer? When did they attrit? Um, CRMs are used a ton. I see it a lot, at least with any end jobs posted on freelance websites. So those will be future videos talking about how you can optimize any end for CRMs and saving time on that side of things. But this is a term like you might not know what a CRM. I assume most people do, but felt like putting that in the video. Anyways, that is essentially 30-ish terms for uh, any end that you should be familiar with before jumping into workflows. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it valuable. If it did, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also taking on freelance customers, we have a Discord down below in the description. Feel free to join that if you wanna jump into a community full of people that are interested in learning about AI or data science. Um, video on the screen right now is gonna be a playlist for any end. Make sure to check that out and I will catch you guys in another video.